Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Over 3,000 of you recently recommended today's song, and I want to shout out a big thanks to our subscriber, Trevor Smith, who wrote, If you like a song that tells a story, try the video for one. Not live, the actual video. It's an incredibly moving and powerful anti-war piece. I have barely dipped my ear into Metallica. I've only done Master of Puppets. So I'm particularly curious how Metallica is going to bring emotions to the forefront with this song. Let's get to it. Oh man, I can tell this is going to be really heavy and even reading a little bit about it ahead of time um, seems like a very heavy subject. Um, so I just want to make sure we all know the a lot of the images that are in this official music video by Metallica are going to be taken from a video that was made, I think in the 70s, it's called Johnny Got His Gun, right? And this was also based on a book uh, essentially about uh, a vet from World War I who uh, experienced some major damage. I think it was from a mortar blowing up. Um, and um, I believe this song will go through maybe a different perspective on his experience. Um, but all of these various scenes that we're seeing, I think are probably taken from that movie and they're blended into this music video. So far, I feel it's, uh, it feels suddenly very touching. So um, let's go back just a little bit and then keep going. What is democracy? What is democracy? Got something to do with young men killing each other. When it comes to my turn, for democracy, any man would give his only begotten son. It is impossible for a decelerated individual to experience pain pleasure, memory, dreams, or thought of any kind. This young man will be as unfeeling, as unthinking as the day until the day he joins me. I don't know whether I'm alive and dreaming or dead and remembering. How can you tell what's a dream and what's real when you can't even tell when you're awake and when you're asleep? Huh. The way that this is mixed, um, a lot of times the voice that's speaking is a little bit under the music and uh, it seems like the essentially the music and the voice are on more equal platform than they often are in, especially in a movie right the music is always going to be underneath the voices that you're hearing um it uh, it's very interesting to hear the two uh, on equal platforms it's hard i will say for me to try to digest everything that's coming by um you know first time listening especially when you get more complicated music like this and the storyline and the music video, everything combined, it's a little hard to get everything uh, processed at once. Uh, but I was particularly fascinated by a part in here where we switched to more major key. Um, also, I've been really interested in how uh, the drums have accented certain beats that I wouldn't have expected them to accent. Uh, let's go back a little bit. I'll point out. So right now it's very minor. It is impossible for a decelerated individual to experience pain, pleasure, memory, dreams, or thought of any kind. This young man will be as unfeeling, as unthinking as the dead until the day he joins me. Right there. I don't know whether I'm alive. I 
like that switch to major is fascinating to have in there. Let's see if I can pair it with what's happening in the dialogue now. This young man will be as unfeeling, as unthinking as the dead until the day he joins them. I don't know whether I'm alive and dreaming or dead and remembering. How can you tell what's a dream and what's real when you can't even tell when you're awake and when you're asleep? Huh. It sounds like it might be the first time that uh, the vet here used the word I, and it's the first time we're hearing directly from him instead of the doctors. That I was shocked by uh, one of the earlier comments saying, you know, that if he'd known, he wouldn't have admitted the patient. He would have just essentially let him die. Wow. I don't know whether I'm alive and dreaming or dead and remembering. How can you tell what's a dream and what's real when you can't even tell when you're awake and when you're asleep? Where am I? I can't remember anything. Can't tell if this is true or dream. Deep down inside, I feel the scream. This terrible silence stops in me. Now that the war is through with me, I'm waking up, I cannot see. That there's not much left of me. Nothing is real but pain now. So this vocal line, when he first starts in, you don't have a lot of vocal pyrotechnics. You don't have a whole lot of variation in pitch. It's kind of hanging around the same area for the most part. But the way that he's bringing some more nasality and um, power and distortion into the sound makes it feel um, like there's a lot of pain in what he's singing. So it it works very well. And and I like the way that they faded essentially from that hospital image um, to him singing because you really put the two together and said, oh, okay, we're continuing this narration um, in the lead vocal as well. I'm going to go back a little bit to here. I can't remember anything. Can't tell if this is true or dream. Deep down inside, I'll feel the scream. This terrible silence stops. I cannot see that there's not much left to me. Nothing is real but pain now. Hold my breath as I wish for death. Oh, please, God, wake me. I just went ahead and chopped off everything. Oh, God. Please make them hear me. They won't listen. They won't hear me. Please don't wake me up. Hold me like this for you. Wow. That is that is immediately extremely touching and, and um, disturbing all at the same time. <laughs> I just recently saw Saving Private Ryan for the first time, and uh, so many of those images I think are very present in my brain. And and knowing um, that this man was admitted, I believe, without arms or legs, that he was just you know didn't really have much left anymore, and imagining the situation that he must be in and and wanting to be able to communicate something and like coming to and realizing that there was really very little left of him anymore. I can't imagine how awful that is. Um, like even trying to is, is just fundamentally uh, disturbing and, and uh, incredibly sad. Um, but I think that it's very effective how we have a reverb that's essentially put over his voice. Um, so you get this idea that this voice is all inside of his head. Uh, very effective um, audio use, uh, just an effect that immediately or immediately lets any of us recognize that this is a person who is stuck inside of their own brain. Uh, oh God, please make them hear me. They won't listen. They won't hear me. Wow. 
one of the uh, interesting things musically that's going on is we have often a shift between one, two, three underneath and uh, and twos. So you'll feel this like uh, like a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three kind of feeling underneath that's essentially... I don't know if the actual time signature is shifting. Sometimes when there are short time signatures just like that, it'll just be briefly written a little bit differently as if it were in a different time signature without it actually shifting on the sheet music. But when you feel that uh, that sort of a subdivision of the beat shift between twos and threes, um, it's often an indication of a time signature shift. They've done it quite a bit in this song already, and I think it's... Uh, it's fascinating. I feel that they probably have related it to certain moments in the the movie and the story as it's going along. Um, maybe possible that the one, two, three is something where you feel more lost in yourself and maybe the one, two feeling, or it felt like we had a four, four time that came out with like a one, two, three, four. Um, it's possible that that is where the sound is coming out more. That's just one possibility. I don't know the song well enough yet. But I'm definitely going to continue to listen to that and see if I can identify um, when it's making those shifts in relation to the story. Time when I live, that do the dude that sticks in me, just like a wartime novelty, tied to machines that make me be, cut this life off from me, hold my breath as I wish more dear, oh please. This is so much more lulling and soft than my first introduction to Metallica, right? Uh, Master of Puppets was so um, just in your face and aggressive the whole time. And it, this instead has, uh, it almost feels like you're dreaming at times. Um, but then, of course, uh, with James Hetfield's voice, you have that pain and distortion coming through. Um, so you have this combo of almost like a conflicting uh, dichotomies within the song as well. It's an entirely different view of Metallica. Honestly, for me, if you had played these two songs completely separately for me, I don't know that I would have identified it as the same band. It's just it feels extremely, extremely different. So shout out to all of our subscribers that recommended this song. Um, this is a great way for me to see an entirely different view of the band. And I really appreciate that recommendation. Let's go back just a little bit. It's almost uplifting right here. You won't always be like this, will I? I can't live like this. I, I can't. Please, no, I can't. I can't help me. And I, I just, I think they've really captured the feeling. I mean, I've never experienced this, but uh, their lyrics superimpose over portions of this movie. Uh, the com com combination of the two is heavy. Now the world is gone. I'm just one. Oh God, help me hold my breath as I wish for death. Oh, please God, help me. Like, I, I mean, I wonder if I were in that situation or if you were in that situation where you completely, you were there, but no one knew you were there. Like, what would that even look like? And trying to imagine and put yourself in those shoes. I, I think that Metallica has found uh, very good words to relate this kind of feeling.
of dignity all its own. Huh. I think this is the first time we're hearing like some blast beats come in here. A lot more uh, low intensity. Wonder of the 20th century. Huh. There's something about the frequency of a blast beat that makes me think of uh, explosions in a war zone, right? Um, I think it's that that low boom and the repetitiveness of it. Um, and I, I hope that that was, I shouldn't say I hope, but I think it might have been where they were looking for. And one of the reasons we started seeing war zone pictures at this point, um, because you you get that sense of, oh, that's right, uh, when it's chaotic and there's so many gunshots and cannon booms around, um, this this sound is reminiscent of that. This has a dignity all its own. Don't you remember when you were little? How you and Bill Harper would uh, bring a wire between the two houses so you could telegraph to each other? You'll remember the Morse code. Darkness in oh, whoa. Whoa. Oh, man. Uh, I can feel that this is going to gain an intensity here with just that first line darkness uh, and, and the uh, building of the blast beats there as well. Um, I, I'm really curious if on the original track, if they left in a lot of the narrations from the movie, uh, they go so effectively together. It almost feels like this beautiful combination of a, a soundtrack, but because of the that music video sensation, again, that mixed level is higher and uh, it's just so effective. Like it, it really, it makes me want to go you know, crawl into a corner and, and cry for a while because it, just thinking about the awful things that happen in war is overwhelming. And uh, I don't feel like we can emotionally handle that. <laughs> wow. You'll remember the more Darkness imprisoning me. Wow. Wow. This is amazing how expressive James Hetfield's voice is with just a couple of pitches that are so close together. Darkness imprisoning me. All that I see. Absolute horror. I cannot live. I cannot die. Death of myself. Body my only fail. So in that whole phrase, he's saying only two pitches and they were a half step apart. That's as close as you can get together and, you know, still be like tuned to a very specific frequency. That, I think that goes to show you don't have to sing a huge range to get your message across to somebody. Right? The point here is emotion. And I appreciate the intensity that he's brought to it at this point with two pitches that are one half step apart. Wow. Okay, that's really heavy. <sighs> wow. Oh, okay. That's um, that's a very, very touching moment. I'm glad that they left that in from the movie. Um, and if you combine that um, with the music, you know, you can see everybody's reaction around there and my reaction too of that, of him saying, kill me um, with, with Morse code in this story. Um, 
but then you hear the intense music from Metallica in the background of, um, I like that for me, it seems like the music is conveying the patient's emotion more clearly. You know, you can see the emotion of everybody else around and obviously feel that, I think, yourself. But uh, I like that we get a little window into the absolute pain that he must be feeling and the intensity of that. I feel that Metallica is bringing that to this as well. <sighs> wow, this is heavy. Okay. Beats, taking my head. and get to the beginning of this guitar solo again I'm really curious what element of the story we are going for with this guitar solo I so far it seems to me that Metallica has closely interwoven all kinds of musical composition elements to tell this story as we're moving along and uh, the growing intensity of the music as as we got the words kill me, I think that was very important. And then that has evolved now into this guitar solo, which is like, just taking it out of context, I was like, whoa, this, this solo is dope. This is really cool. Um, and it seems really hard to play, but I, I'm kind of thinking a little bit further. There's some intention behind this. They decided to specifically put this solo at this point for an emotional reason. Um, you know, is that is that because we're spiraling further into uh, this uh, veteran's headspace as we're going? Or um, is it maybe the reaction of um, some of the people that were surrounding him of like, well, you know, can we pull the plug? Is that humane to do? Um, what's maybe that's the toughness of that decision? I'm not sure. Of course, it's open to interpretation. It should be interpreted. Um, but I'm I'm really, really curious what you all have to say about this too. Let me know in the live chat comments as we're premiering this, or let me know in the comments down below in the YouTube video too. Um, I'm really, really curious where you think the story is brought to with this guitar solo. Don't you have some message for him, Andre? He's the product of your profession, not mine. I feel like maybe more likely that it is about that moment um, of pulling the plug or removing life support and the the struggle of someone to do that. But I'm still not entirely sure. Uh, I thought it was really helpful to have another person come in and help her um, after it looked like she did that. <sighs> Man, I have so many tears that keep coming up and 
it's just like, this is such a heavy and emotional song. You guys are totally right. Uh, wow. Um, let's, let's keep going. Let's finish this out. Inside me, I just Nobody pays any attention. If I had arms, I could kill myself. If I had legs, I could run away. If I had a voice, I could talk and be some kind of company for myself. Why don't they get it over with and kill me? I could yell for help, but nobody would help me. I just got to do something to see how I can go on like this. Before I started a YouTube channel, I didn't understand the depth of sadness that metal could communicate. And I feel that in this moment, in the last half hour, I have grown in understanding for that again. Before I thought it was mostly just anger or frustration at the world, um, or maybe at yourself, but those were the kind of emotions that I associated more with metal and often with rock as well. This to me is an amazing indication of how anger and sadness are often, um, you know, two faces of the same coin and the deep sadness that I could feel throughout the song, along with the intense struggle that accompanied it uh, was profound. Uh, such an excellent setting of the music video. You guys were totally right to watch the music video. The impact and the feeling of a soundtrack merged uh, sort of on the same plane in a music video format was really, really well done. But I think more than anything, I'm just shocked by the ability of Metallica to go from something that was so aggressive and master of puppets to something to me that uh, really truly just makes me want to cry for hours and hours and hours. It's incredible beauty of human spirit, I think, to be able to express emotions so fully in both. So thank you very much to all of our subscribers who recommended this. If you haven't seen that first Metallica video yet, you should check it out over here. It was really fun to discover them for the first time, and um, I feel like it is only even more eye-opening to understand a little bit more of what depth they can compose at. So thank you again, everyone. I hope to see you in another video soon.